No to Syrian refugees, even five-year-olds. Five-year-olds. That's what New Jersey Governor Chris Christie had to say, who's also a GOP presidential candidate. Uh, what if they were orphans under the age of five? I don't think orphans under five um, are being, you know, should be admitted into the United States at this point. At the heels of the horrific attacks in Paris, Baghdad, Beirut, and most recently in Nigeria, when it's a time to call for unity, when it's a time to call for calm, 27 plus governors in the United States are saying no to Syrian refugees. We're trying to ban the very people running away from the very terrorism that we're talking about. But it didn't stop with Chris Christie. Jeb Bush talking about bringing in only Syrian Christians. We should focus our efforts as it relates to refugees for the Christians that are being slaughtered. How would you know if someone was a Christian? Does it matter if they're Christian or Muslim? This is a man who's trying to be the next president of the United States. But wait, there's more. Donald Trump talking about let's surveil the mosques. Well, you're going to have to watch and study the mosques because a lot of talk is going on at the mosques. Where have you been, Mr. Trump? Our mosques have always been under surveillance. Have you not read the AP investigative reports? We are under surveillance. See, with these political leaders, these U.S. governors, these presidential candidates don't know about the refugee process is that the vetting process is super tedious. We're talking about multiple biometrics, medical examinations, criminal records from multiple countries. I mean, these people People are registered with UN agencies. We know who they are. And according to The Economist, over 750,000 refugees have been led into the United States since 9-11. Guess what? Zero, none, zilch of any of these refugees have ever been arrested for domestic terrorism in the United States. So these claims that we're just going to let in the terrorists is absolutely outrageous. Let's call it what it is, political football. It's an opportunity to fundraise, an opportunity to score political points on the backs of Syrian refugees running away from terrorism. This is the worst refugee crisis that we have seen since World War II. As the wealthiest nation in the world, as one of the greatest nations in the world, it is our moral responsibility to continue to welcome refugees and to call out hateful rhetoric when we hear it. Islamophobia is real. And this hateful rhetoric that is being spewed by political leadership, by media pundits, by media outlets, impacts the American Muslim community. What we've seen post-Paris Beirut attacks were threats to mosques. I'm gonna personally have a, a militia that's going to come down to your Islamic society in Reynolds County, firebomb you, shoot whoever's there on site in the head. I don't care if they're two years old or a hundred. And my name is Martin Schnitzler. Come find me, please. I mean, the fact that a man can call a mosque and make a threat and leave his name on a voicemail and say that he will kill two-year-old children or hundred-year-old elders, this is what we're talking about. This hateful rhetoric fuels acts of hate against innocent people that have nothing to do with these terrorist attacks happening across the world. God forbid you look like an Arab American or an American Muslim and you're on an, a flight back home from Baltimore to Chicago reading some news on your iPhone like probably everybody else on the airplane and then being asked to be taken off the airplane by a woman who felt uncomfortable with your presence. Police in Maryland say that the passenger that was complaining about the suspicious activity from another passenger that they were actually concerned because this individual was looking at a smartphone. This is what recently happened on a Spirit Airline flight after the Paris attack. This hateful anti-Arab, anti-Muslim, anti-refugee rhetoric is not just words. These words have impact in communities across the country. And we need these political leadership to take responsibility for their words and the actions that come from those who are influenced by the words that they say. I'm going to also give credit where it's due when our political leadership does the right thing. I want to give props to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and New York City Council Speaker Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for standing up and saying we will continue to take refugees. I want to thank our President Barack Obama for calling religious tests on refugees shameful because that's exactly what it is. Because this is what our country has always been and this is what we should always be. A sanctuary for refugees, immigrants from all over the world. Unity is the enemy of terrorism. Let's not play into the hands of ISIS and other terrorist groups. This is a time where we need to come together. We are one nation. We need to stand together to keep the tradition of the United States of America, which is to continue to welcome refugees from all over the world.